Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to be walking through how to create a RESTful API in Lambda using the Elastic Load Balancing Service, or specifically an application load balancer. And I'm gonna be writing all this in Python, so we will get started. And so we are at the application, uh, or the AWS console right now, and I'm going to view the Lambda dashboard, or we can just type in Lambda right here. And I am going to then click on create function right here. And we're gonna make it from scratch. I'm gonna give this thing a name. I'll call this the demo Lambda. And I'm gonna change the runtime to Python 3.9. And I'm not going to be changing anything with the permissions. So we're gonna be using all the defaults and I'm not changing anything in advanced settings either. So we'll just click on create function. So we're gonna give this thing a moment to create it. All right, and here we are. So now um, we've got our little uh, Lambda function written here. I'm gonna make this bigger just so I can see it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, be writing in some code here to essentially print out an HTTP response so that when we view this from our application load balancers DNS, we'll get some kind of uh, you know, thing in our browser is showing up. So we have to like download and open a file. So basically um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just define a string called content and I'll just have uh, some, uh, you know, little paragraph strings and it'll say, hello world from Lambda. And what I want to do is I'm going to need to return a, uh, a specific dictionary that the browser likes so that it can actually render it successfully and I'm going to paste in what I have created earlier because I know that will work. Um, so we're just going to uh, do that. So I'm gonna define a, another dictionary in here called response, and uh, then I'm just going to return that response object. Uh, so basically it's just gonna say, uh, it's gonna be a 200 status code, which means success in HTTP. Um, and then description, we're not gonna say it's base64 encoded. And then we also need to make sure that in our headers, we're telling the browser that this is going to be some text to expect from our little web app. So um, that's what that part's needed for. And then we're also passing in that content that we have here. Uh, and then all we're doing is returning this little dictionary in our Python Lambda, Lambda handler function. Um, so now that we've got all this stuff, um, I'm going to test it and we'll create a new event. We'll just call it the test event. And, um, you know, it doesn't really matter, but we're just gonna click on save and then we're gonna click on test again. And uh, we can see that we are getting our expected output from this Lambda function, uh, which is great. So now I'm going to click on deploy and this is gonna actually put these changes uh, into this Lambda function. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create an application load balancer for uh, our Lambda function so that it can direct calls to it. So I'm again going to go up to the console and I'm going to type in EC2 and then we're going to view uh, the EC2 dashboards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down in the left pane here to uh, load balancing and the load balancers. And it's important to note that uh, you do have a limited amount of time on the free tier to have a load balancer, but if you forget to delete this thing and let it run indefinitely, you will get charged for it because load balancers are computational resources. Um, so I'm just gonna click on create load balancer right here. And I'm going to basically create an application load balancer and click on create. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna give this thing a uh, name. I'll call this the ALB for Lambda demo. And uh, we're gonna let it have an internet facing scheme and I'm not gonna be changing anything. Uh, in terms of network mapping, uh, right now we are in the US East 2 region and I'm going to basically be telling it which AZs uh, that my application load balancer can operate in. So I'm gonna say uh, it's okay to work in 2A, 2B, and 2C. So we'll spin this up in the three AZs and then I'm going to uh, stick with the default security group, but we will come back to this in a little bit because we're gonna run into some issues if we just go with the defaults. Um, I'm also gonna say that it's okay to be, we, we need our ALB to be listening on port 80 because when I send a get request from my browser to our uh, application load balancer, it is going to be over port 80. So we do need to uh, do that. Um, but what we also need is a target group. And the target group's purpose is to uh, basically register that Lambda function that we've made so that when the application 
load balancer gets a request, it knows like what set of resources, in this case it's just one Lambda function, but like what group of resources it should forward it to. So in our case, we're gonna change this from instances because we're not gonna be doing EC2 instances, we're gonna be doing a Lambda function. And I'll just say, uh, this is a target group for the Lambda demo. And I'm not gonna enable health checks here. Uh, and I'm just gonna click on next. And I'm also going to now select the Lambda function that we have written uh, a few minutes ago. So that is the demo Lambda right there. And we're also just gonna be sticking with the latest version of this thing uh, and then click on create target group. So we're going to uh, let this thing get created. And uh, you can see that we still have yet to associate the load balancer or the ALB with this target group that now has our Lambda function in it. So I'm gonna go back to that first tab we have and and then if I click here, you, still, you see I still have no uh, target group, so I have to click on refresh, and now it sees it. So now we'll select that target group for the Lambda. And um, next, what we're going to be doing is just reviewing the summary and click on Create Load Balancer. And it's important to note that with your ALBs, uh, it does take a few minutes to come up, so I'm going to uh, let this thing fast forward through that and then we'll get back to the action once this thing is fully online. Alrighty, so now our application load balancer is online. That did take a couple minutes, um, but what we're going to do is uh, scroll down on this page and I'll make this bigger um, so that we can view the DNS name. So basically the DNS is going to uh, look at this string and then it's going to figure out what is the IP address that it should direct. Uh, it too, and so we've got you know these VPCs. Um, but anyway, so basically we're going to copy this DNS, and we're going to open up a new page, and we're going to paste in uh, the DNS for our application load balancer, and we're going to click on Enter, and you're going to sit here, and you're going to wonder why are you getting a timeout when you try to actually run this thing, and the reason for that is because uh, we have not configured the security group properly for our application load ba balancer. So the Lambda itself is good. But what we do need to do is we need to, uh, on the application load balancer page, scroll down here and find that security group that AWS created by default for us and open it up. And um, we're going to click on inbound rules and make this thing bigger and hopefully make zoom out a little bit. But essentially what you see is that they're saying that they allow all traffic um, on all ports uh, and from what I've seen, it doesn't actually do that. So what you do need to do is you need to click on Edit Inbound Rules. And I'm going to add a rule here. And we want to allow HTTP traffic. That'll be by default uh, the on port 80. And we're basically going to say that on the any IPv4 address will be allowed to uh, uh, we'll make HTTP calls to our uh, ALB. And in addition to that, just so I'm a little bit future-proofed, uh, we're going to allow the same HTTP type traffic, but with the CIDR block that corresponds to IPv6 addresses. Um, so I'm just going to specify that right there. And I'm going to click on Save Rules. And now that we've updated the security groups for, or the one security group for our application load balancer, if I go back to here and I click on Refresh, you can see that we are now getting the response from our Lambda function. So we have successfully created a application load balancer uh, that is handling requests and letting it go onto our Lambda function that returns a response to us and our browser is able to render. So this is pretty awesome. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to also play around a little bit with the types of arguments that you can pass into your Lambda function and how you can do those. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to uh, modify this URL. Uh, so basically I'm going to put a forward slash and then just paste in this. And so basically what we're doing is we're going to now be passing in uh, this input argument my var and it's going to have the value of foo. Uh, and we prefixed, prefixed that with the question mark. So I'm just going to hit enter right here. You can see that um, it's still going to return the same response to us because we haven't told it to do anything special with this new input that we've given it. So we're getting the same exact response we expect. But um, if we go to the EC2 management console, and I'm going to now look up that Lambda uh, function, we're gonna go back to that dashboard, and we're going to click on the demo Lambda function that we've already created here. And I'm going to uh, move over to this monitor tab for a Lambda function. 
and um, you can see it's going to make some nice little plots for us in terms of how long it's taking to execute our uh, our code, which is cool. But what we actually care about is right now is viewing the logs in CloudWatch, and it's up just like this. And so um, you can see that we have got a log stream right here that corresponds to the different times at which uh, our Lambda function was running. So I'm going to pick this latest one. And um, I'm just going to refresh this real quick to make sure that we have everything. And next, you'll note how I called this thing my var in the URL when we pass it in as an argument. So I click back here and I just paste in this my var and I hit enter on the keyboard. Um, it should be able to find uh, that. So sometimes it is not able to pick this up. All right, and so the reason why I am not seeing this in the logs for CloudWatch is because I've never actually printed the event in our actual Lambda function, which is my mistake. So in order to have better logs, and I strongly recommend doing this, um, I would go back to my Lambda function like this, and we're going to go to the actual code of it. And what I wanna do is you're gonna note how Lambda is taking in this event. This event is a JSON dictionary um, that's basically coming in. And what I'm going to write here is a print statement, and we're just going to print out the event like that. We're going to test this guy, and we can now see that in addition to just hello world from Lambda, we're also getting the entirety of uh, this stuff. So I'm going to deploy uh, the new Lambda function that has that print statement of the event. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to refresh this page and it's just going to you know, do the exact same thing that uh, it's done before, which is give us the same string response. Um, but I wanna find that my var uh, in, in the CloudWatch logs. So I'm going to refresh this and uh, go back to the Lambda demo. And we can see that we've now have a new log stream right here. And um, you can now see that we have a request context in our actual logs, which is great. Um, previously, we did not because we did not have that print statement on line four. And so now, if I wanted to say, uh, where is my var located, and I hit enter, um, you can see that it's able to uh, open up this guy. And then if we do a little search, we can see my var is equal to foo. And so um, with that, we can now build on this to improve the ability of our Lambda function to now take in inputs, do operations, and then return a response uh, as we expect. So that is going to wrap things up. We will build on this more in future videos. Thank you again for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys next time. And also, last, last thing uh, before I forget is if you do not want to be billed for this stuff, which I don't think you would, um, your Lambda function's fine because you don't pay for Lambdas if you're not calling them. But what you will get paid for is your application load balancer. So we have to go back to that EC2 dashboard, go to services, and then um, I'm going to scroll down and click on the load balancers that we have. And um, we've got our ALB running right now for our Lambda and I'm going to click on delete because I don't want to be billed for this thing because this is an actual compute resource that we would pay for. Um, so with that, we now no longer have any resources that we would be getting billed for uh, over time by running this stuff. So that's it. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys next time.